Look at this thing! Completely locked 90 hertz at this resolution and settings, but it's asleep at the wheel with less than 70% usage. The 3090 Ti is getting ruined. I love this. Hi, I'm Omni Whatever, and welcome to my channel and review. VR has always been one of the most demanding gaming things you can do, and if you ask almost any enthusiast using a high-res headset, many of them will say that there is no such thing as overkill when it comes to this medium. And this goes double for something with the monstrously high resolution of this boy right here. Pimax 8KX, which has a jaw-droppingly high resolution of 4920 by 3160 per eye after barrel distortion correction. Enter... This Titan, the RTX 4090. This utter monster of a GPU, both big and heavy enough to bludgeon a man to death with, has been making quite a bit of buzz uh, for its absolutely staggering jump in graphical power. But is this card the VR Messiah that enthusiasts have been waiting for? Well, today I'm going to be taking a look at how its performance stacks up to the previous top dog, the, the uh, RTX 3090 Ti, and see how they compare on the most demanding headset of the consumer market, the 8KX here. Because if they can stack up and handle this thing, well, they can handle pretty much anything we got out right now. <laughs> the configuration I'll be testing with is an EVGA RIP. Z690 Dark Kingpin motherboard with a 12900K and 6000 megahertz CL30 DDR5 RAM with the EVGA again rip th RTX 3090 Ti and Asus TUF4090. Likewise, I will be also testing these with the FSR mod. Quick preface: I only had a short time to test with the 3090 Ti. Sold it to a friend who needed that VRAM for VR chat, so I could afford this thing burning a hole in my wallet, and they really wanted it ASAP. So I only managed to squeeze in five games in direct comparison, but I've got a very special VR benchmark to share at the end. Likewise, if you see the FPS VR counter, uh, average FPS doesn't match what I've written on the screen, that's because I restarted the data collecting once I began the benchmark, and the average data I'm showing is based on that when I stopped recording. With that out of the way, let's start the GPU showdown! First up is Guildford Castle. These are the settings I'll be testing on, as when I tried cinematic shadows, my FPS tank is something like 45. On the left, you'll be seeing the native run-through, while on the right, you can see the FSR. Now, with native, you can see that uh, even in the menu, we were having some issues maintaining 70, and then there's some dips that are even below 40. But on the right, with using FSR at 0.77 render scale, already the frame rate is significantly improved. Moments where it was dipping down to 40, or even lower, it seems to be bottoming out a touch below 60 FPS, but on average is doing significantly better, and we're seeing around a 33% uplift from native. Now, let's take a look at the 4090. Already, this thing is making a mockery of the 3090 Ti doing FPS on native, which is comparable to even higher than what the 3090 Ti was on FSR. And with FSR, things are even sillier, as I turned up Cinematic Shadows and x4 MSAA, as the current setup was not remo remotely stressing it, yet, look at how the 4090 is easily maintaining near lock 90 FPS with higher settings and still isn't being fully utilized. Even the worst dips are only around 80 FPS. With FSR, this game can legitimately be maxed out at large FOV with the 4090. That's just crazy. Next up is one of my favorite games, Pavlov. I loaded up one of the more demanding custom maps I knew, and at native with the 3090 Ti, you can see I'm getting around 70 or so, but with one bad dip below 60. Well, with FSR, I'm getting roughly 80, except for the same area where I dip below 60 FPS. And this is important to note because of checking the frames on the 4090, I'm getting 90 FPS at native, but when looking at the same problem areas, I'm dropping frames just as much. So, despite better performance, I am running into either poor optimization or being CPU bound, considering the much higher frame spikes on it. 
This behavior did not change even with FSR. So, even if you have some of the best hardware in the world, if the game has optimization issues, and this can be especially the case with user-created content, then you might not see a huge uplift you're hoping for. To illustrate this point, let's move on to game number three, Project Wingman. Project Wingman is another of my favorite games, but it brings even the best computers to their knees. Running at all max settings, save for probes processing because it adds extra glare into the R. Look at how badly the 3090 Ti is being beat up at native resolution. As I'm approaching the city, it's struggling to maintain even 45 FPS. It has a truly awful stutter upon firing two missiles. But with FSR, I'm getting a much more playable 60 to 65 or so, and that stutter with the missiles does not happen. Neither of these I would consider that playable though, but at least with FSR one can dial down some settings or go to normal FOV and probably get some pretty good results. Moving on to the 4090, we see that performance is hovering around where the 3090 Ti was with FSR. Maybe slightly worse. And that provide around a 35% uplift from the average FPS. But that stutter with the missiles is still there. However, once we add FSR into the mix, the frame rate is a much more playable 80 to 85 FPS, and even the two missiles only briefly spike it down to 63. Turn down the FOV to normal or dial down a saying or two, and you could definitely have a stable 75 to 90 FPS this way. But the uplift is still on the smaller end and kind of disappointing, especially when we look at our next two games. Fourth on the list is Survive. Tested at native resolution with the default anti-aliasing and high preset. I also test it with DLSS quality instead of FSR because it's one of the few VR games which actually supports it. Right away, looking over at the fire, one can see that the frames are dipping to 30 to 35 at native, while it's 50 to 55 with DLSS. However, even moving after the fire, we can see that 3090 Ti is generally swinging between 55 to 65 FPS. While with DLSS, it's around 75 to 85, which isn't bad, but we can do better. Now with the 4090, the results were so insane that I had to double check them. Looking at the same fire which brought the 3090 Ti to its knees at native, it's doing a solid 65 or higher FPS, while DLSS is doing a dropless 90, and not even breaking 90% usage. 4090 is literally doubling the 3090 Ti's performance right now. And when walking through the area, even on native, the 4090 is holding an almost entirely stable 90 FPS, with a few spikes. Meanwhile, DLSS quality is completely dropless 90 FPS, and the GPU is rarely cracking 70% or higher usage. This is absolutely mind-bending when comparing to the 3090 Ti's results. This is by far the largest uplift I've seen from any game, and the fact that the 4090 can literally double the 3090 Ti in any situation is just insanity of the best kind. I love it. Now we move on to the big boys. Flat screen to VR mods. If there was anything I thought could truly bring the 4090 to its knees, it would definitely be one of these. I WANTED to test Resident Evil 8, but when I was doing benchmarking, Capcom just happened to break it with an update, and the mod maker, Prey Dog, only fixed it after I sold my 3090 Ti. So I had to sell for RE7. Thanks, Capcom. RE7 was tested on the DirectX 12 version with all max settings, except for shadows being set to medium, and the settings you must disable for the mod to function. Right away, we can see the 3090 Ti does not stand a damn chance at native resolution. It is struggling to break even 35 FPS in the starting area. Even with the built-in FSR on ultra quality setting, we're only hovering around 45 FPS. I, I really don't think I even need to show any more here. The 3090 Ti barely cracks 40 FPS when staring at the floor. Even with FSR, it's not even breaking 60. This is totally unplayable. Next, let's move on to the 4090. Right away, we see the 4090 is doing a little over 50 FPS at native. Almost a 70% boost from the 3090 Ti, eclipsing even its ability with FSR. Meanwhile, with FSR, the 4090 is holding a strong at around 70 FPS. I would like to emphasize this. On a flat screen game, ported to VR, only being capable of so much optimization, with settings almost all maxed out, 
rendering at roughly 5K by 3K per eye, the 4090 is delivering a mostly playable experience with FSR. That is stupid powerful. Personally, I would rather drop down to normal FOV to get a more stable 75 to 90 hertz. But the fact that I can even consider that a realistic possibility, with this resolution still being a quite high 3800 by 3160 per eye, it's just amazing. Actually, let's test that right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is kind of just silly to look at that. I mean, it's matching over 80 FPS at native now. I don't even need FSR. Look at how it's holding up pretty damn well through everything. In fact, because we have so much headroom with FSR, let's truly put this GPU to the test. I'm gonna max out shadows and turn on ray tracing with FSR on ultra quality. Ray tracing in VR has felt like a ridiculous idea, but can the 4090 finally deliver? Let's take a look. Holy hell. I I'm in disbelief right now. With all max settings, including the ray tracing, I'm still getting around 75 to 80 FPS here. I had to keep checking my frames because I could not believe what I was seeing, honestly. This is a 100% playable experience in such a demanding title with ray tracing in VR. And honestly, while some of the ray tracing is subtle, in VR I actually did notice a difference right away when I was running through the benchmarks. If one can tolerate the extra shimmer from FSR, I actually think it's pretty nice and worth using. I don't even have anything to compare with the 3090 Ti because the mere idea of ray tracing in VR, it, it just sounded ridiculous on that. So, that was the 4090's performance versus the 3090 Ti. Some titles, honestly a little bit disappointing, have uh, not even a 40% uplift in one case, but when it got to flex, Oh man, did it flex hard on the 3090 Ti. Sometimes double the performance in one title, and even capable of delivering a solid ray-traced experience on RE7 with max settings at normal FOV with FSR. This would be the part where I show a chart with the average FPS and percentage increase, but because there were some moments where I either was limited by my refresh rate and below 100% usage, Plus, there were some real times where the gap widened massively beyond the average, and it's a little hard to do exact one-to-one -one benchmarking in VR. I don't think it quite tell the full story, personally. But that naturally brings up the ever-important question of, is this thing worth it? I know that may seem a little silly question to ask with such an expensive Halo product, but value is still an important thing to consider for most people, and the price of last-gen GPUs is getting quite low now. I got mine at MSRP and managed to sell my 3090 Ti for a good amount, so it was still well below $1,000 for me to upgrade. But I still had to sell a good chunk of stuff I had lying around and had some very good luck to be able to afford it. If this was even another $150, $200, I'm... Not sure if it, if I'd still go for it, but it's still it's definitely something I'd still have really give some major thought. If every game provided the kind of uplift Survivor RE7 got, oh, it'd be a lot easier to justify. I cannot express how game changing that uplift felt to actually experience, but. If somebody is playing games with see enough lift like what Project Wingman did, well, 35% is probably not going to feel worth that huge price tag. <laughs> Plus, it's always important to consider the ever-important question of what your needs are and if you're happy with what you have. Like, the AKX here is an insanely high-resolution HMD. From the 3090 Ti benchmarks, you, it can be plainly seen it NEEDS that insane power without heavier compromising, be it lowering settings a decent bit or the FOV. But something lower res, like say the Reverb G2 or the Quest 2, it'll certainly make use of the 3090's horsepower, don't get me wrong. But depending on what you play, the cost may not feel worth it if you're already on a high-end GPU. So, 
assuming you're somebody that's considering it, but are on the fence if it's worth it or not, I think it depends. I also want to preface this by saying uh, you'll want to be on a good components to properly use this. The 4090 demands a decently balanced system, so I'm going to be assuming you got your got something good and you're not on some ancient 4690K. If you're somebody who wants an almost uncompromising VR experience that can run nearly everything on high or even max settings, that'll only begin to buckle against the absolute heaviest workloads. The 4090 may finally be the VR savior that we've been waiting for. Nothing even comes close to this beast and enables things I didn't even consider possible on the 3090 Ti. But this beauty doesn't sell for, out for cheap, and uh, the price may understandably put quite a few people off when you can build a decently strong upper mid-end system, a whole PC, for the same cost or less. ESPECIALLY once you go past the MSRP cards. If you're already on a 3090 or 3090 Ti, though, then it might not be worth it if you're unsure on the value and can't resell your card for a good price. Those can still run most stuff fairly well, depending on the HMD and if you're willing to make some compromises. But if you are on something lower than that and the ridiculous price tag doesn't make you start sweating bullets... You'll probably see close to double the performance or more. And that's just incredible. That's the kind of performance you'd often need to jump multiple generations or sometimes even tiers to get in addition to that. The 4090 could be an extremely worthwhile upgrade with how VR wants every last frame you can get. And uh, there are my thoughts on the 4090 and showcase of its abilities. What do you guys think? Uh, do you think it's worth it to buy for VR? Are you going to be upgrading? What card are you upgrading from? Let me know.